Nagbabalik tayo dito sa Kababayan Today. I'm G. Tanji. Oliver Wang is here. He is the Associate Professor of Sociology at the California State University in Long Beach. He's a frequent contributor to NPR, KCET's Artbound, KPCC's Take Two, and the Pop Rocket pop, uh, Podcast, rather. So, pag-uusapan natin ang kanyang libro, which came out recently. Very interesting book. And uh, it talks about the Filipino-American mobile DJ cruise in San Francisco, Bay Area, which, of course, is just up north. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. All right. So, let's get to it, yeah. to this book. Sure. Um, I, I went through it, and I, I highlighted okay. a couple of passages that I want to share with the audience because I thought it was really interesting. Sure. It was not that respondents lacked an ethnic consciousness individually. Yeah. Some grew up feeling conflicted and confused over being Filipino. Others felt more at home identifying with black or Latino friends. Still, others wore their ethnicity as a mark of honor and celebrated it through individual acts, such as painting the Philippine national flag on their sneakers, for example. And then I turn the page and uh, you interview from uh, Daily City's Fusion, you ask him about his identity mm -hmm. as a Filipino, and he answers you talking about mostly how the clothing is a symbol of their culture. So I, I find it fascinating because we have a lot of, you know, second generation Filipino Americans that are growing up, third generation, that are in the same boat. Right. My question is, what the big overarching question is, what did you learn about the Filipino culture through the research of this book? I, I think the most interesting thing that I found doing it, and just to kind of give a quick background, the book looks at the Filipino-American mobile disc jockey scene in the San Francisco Bay Area, which was largely a 1980s phenomenon, but mm -hmm. I mean, it was massive, it lasted an entire decade, and involved dozens of crews, hundreds or thousands of people who participated in it. But the thing that I found most interesting was the ways in which they identified as Filipino really differed from person to person. I thought the scene itself would have seen itself or, or had an identity as being sort of a Filipino thing, if you will. Mm -hmm. But the more people I talked to, a lot of them said, no, I never really thought of it as being anything that had to do with my ethnic background. And even though they recognized that the people that they were in the crews with, the people who came to the parties, they were all Filipino, mm -hmm. there wasn't this idea that what we're doing is somehow representing you know, the Philippines are representing a Filipino-American identity. That was much more individualistic. It wasn't a collective thing that they put across. Yeah, well, that alone is such a big realization. Why do you think? I think part of it was their age. These were largely high school st students and teenagers in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. I think the kind of politics of identity that we, th we tend to think about with Filipino-American identity in today in the, in the 2000s, um, it's much more self-conscious. It's much more pronounced. Um, in the 1980s, uh, it, I, I don't think the same kind of politics of identity were there, especially if you're you know, 14 or 15 years old, the ways in which you've developed a sense of yourself or a sense of your community uh, are going to be a little bit less resonant then at that age uh, than it would be if you were, let's say, a 20-something in, in the 2000s where you have you know, someone like a Manny Pacquiao to identify with or who represents you know, a, a public figure, if you will. In the 80s, I mean, you think about who were the, the main public Filipino, uh, you know, icons of the 1980s, right? Who do you? There's very None. few people you can, you can you can turn to. Maybe the maybe the Marcoses, but that's not someone that would would have been a positive identification at the time. That's right, and right. definitely times are changing, right? right? There are more Filipino Americans in the scene that are, right. you know, highlighted in media and are successful. I'm really wondering. You are not Filipino. No, I'm Chinese American. Oliver. Yeah. Why was this a book you wanted to do? So I I've, I've discovered the scene in the 1990s. I was a academic, I was a music journalist, um, and I was also a DJ. And so if you were in the Bay Area in the 1990s, you knew about Filipino-American DJs like Hubert, like Apollo, like Mixmaster Mike and Shortcut, because these were amongst the best DJs in the world. Uh, they were touring, they were, I mean, they were world famous. And so as a journalist, I got to interview them and ask, so how did you get started? And the, the common story that they all had is, well, we first got started in the 1980s as members of a mobile crew. And so the scratch DJ scene that people like Hubert and them were associated with, that was fairly well known. But I didn't know anyone really talking about the mobile scene. And as both a journalist and as a scholar, 
you know, sort of this light bulb that went over my head that suggested, well, no one's talking about this. This is worth investigating. And so that's sort of how I, I got interested in the history. Well, as a Filipino American, I want to thank you and the community wants to thank you because we don't have a lot of people that sort of, you know, that are not Filipino that are really interested in investigating what our culture is about. And like you said in the book, it's not necessarily a culture of being Filipino, but a movement. Yeah. yeah. And, and one that's really rooted in community. I mean, the, the success of this, of this mobile party scene would not have been possible if not for the extended family networks within the Filipino immigrant community. Uh, it certainly depended on Filipino American student groups and high schools and churches, mm -hmm. uh, provincial organizations. So what you see through this history of even though it's a, you know, it's a party scene, it's about DJing, it's about music, it's about dancing, it's still connected to a much larger immigrant history in the Bay Area that makes this scene possible on some level. Okay. Thank you so much, oh, Oliver. You're so welcome. Uh, we'll be right back with Oliver. We have one more excerpt that I'd like to share with all of you. Magbabalik po kami.